Busan, Malaysia is a stock exchange holding from father in 1976 and this in 2005 that exists over 900 businesses in raising finance across 50 industries. Busan, Malaysia controls many of the companies in Malaysia. According to our assignment, we might choose one company from Busan, Malaysia which is Asyata Group Berhad. My name is Tingyi and my metric number is 287609. As introduction states, we had chosen Asyata Group Berhad to complete our group assignment. Asyata Group Berhad, formerly known as TM International Berhad TMI. TMI was founded on 1992 and renamed as Asyata on 2009. Asyata's headquarters is located at Kuala Lumpur Central. It is directed by Jamaruddin Ibrahim which joined Asyata in 2008. Asyata is a Malaysian multinational telecommunications with extensive operations in Asia. It has a great subscriber base which led to one of the largest wireless carriers in Malaysia. The main activity of Asyata is in investment holding and the provision of telecommunication and consultancy services on an international scale. Their main focus is being emerging market in Asia and South Asia. The subsidiary of Asyata include Cellcom, Encel, XL Asyata, Smart, Dialog, and Robi in several countries. Asyata of today has undergone a transformation into a triple core strategy driven business that focus on digital telco, digital businesses, and infrastructure. The next part is vision and mission of Asyata. Asyata's vision. The vision of Asyata is becoming a new generation digital champion. The vision of Asyata had been announced in 2016 and will be implementing until 2022. Asyata's mission. Asyata Group Berhad revealed the four piece goal instead of creating a mission statement. The four piece goals, which are performance, people, partnership, and planet and society. The diagram on the right hand side is more detailed about the four piece goals. My name is Nur Shafika Binti Muhammad. My metric number is 287524. Now I'll be talking about Asiata's products and services. There's a lot of brands under Asiata Corporation. This brand next can be categorized by their function. The first function is digital tackle. The next one is digital financial service and the last one is telecommunication infrastructure. Telecom serve roughly 9.1 million consumers with prepaid and postpaid mobile and digital services. Products and services under Cellcom is Xpec, Cellcom Home Fiber, Cellcom Max and Cellcom Home Wireless. Next, we go to XL Asiata. XL provide prepaid, postpaid, digital and broadband services to all of their customers. Other services that XL offer is Accra Package, XL Home, XL Priority and XL Business Solution. Next, we have Dialog. The product and services are Dialog is Dialog TV, Dialog Global, Dialog Broadband and Infrastructure. Next brand under digital telco is Robi. Robi provides the widest network coverage around Bangladesh. There's few products under Robi such as My Robi app, My Sport, Nor, and Splash. Other than that, we have Smart. It is a telecommunication company that serves 7.5 million subscribers in Cambodia. Lastly, we got Encel. Encel Azeta has been committed to being the best local mobile in Nepal. You can see on the screen there is product from Azeta like Cellcom SIM card, Smart SIM card, XL SIM card, Cellcom broadband, and also SL Home Router. Now, let's move on to digital financial service. The first brand under digital financial service is Boost. Boost is basically self developed lifestyle, e wallet that promises. To change how individuals conduct business in daily life, Boost aims to make transaction easier, faster, more secure, and rewarding experience for consumers. Boost will let their users to pay with their phones and eliminate the need to carry cash or credit card. Next, we have Aspiracy. Aspiracy is the newest digital financial services brand in Malaysia and Indonesia. Their mission is to give possibilities and access to financial services to serve MSMEs and consumers. The third one, we got ADA. ADA 
that is short form for analytic data advertising. Acta is a digital analytic and AI firm that creates and implements integrated digital analytic and marketing solutions. Ada partners with leading firms in Asian and South Asian regions to assist them increase their digital and data maturity and also meet their business goals. Last one, we got at Zeta Digital Labs. Zeta Digital Labs is Asian software service or solution company that focuses on digital and IT services and solutions that helps businesses prosper in their digital age. Lastly, we go to telecommunication infrastructure. E.co is first regional integrated telecommunication infrastructure services company in Asia. They are providing end-to-end -end power services ranging from power leasing to all locations built to suit energy and transmission as well as operation and maintenance. E.co operated in Malaysia, Myanmar, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Cambodia and Pakistan. Main competitors of Asata Group Berhad in Malaysia is Mesis Communication, DG Telecommunication, Telecom Malaysia Berhad, and U-Mobile Sentiran Berhad. Mesis Communication is a Malaysia telecommunication company which established in 1999. Ananda Krishnan, a Malaysia millionaire, owned the majority of the company's stock. Mesis income and employee numbers are anticipated to be in the regions of $1,000 to $10,000 million and $1,001 to $5,000 respectively. Prepaid core plans and data plans, month-to-month -month membership plans, global roaming, MMS, and others are all available to both prepaid and postpaid subscription clients. For businessmen, Messi's has offered VSAT services, BlackBerry-based mobile services, cloud computing, data storage, fit high-speed internet, and call conferencing. DG has been created on 24 May 1995 and turned into the essential telecommunication industry to dispatch and operate a totally digital cellular network in Malaysia. Teleno ASA of Norway owned the larger part of DG with 49%. DG employed over 2,500 people and has 10.22 million mobile subscribers as of June 2021. DG is the first telecommunication company to be listed in the infrastructure category on Busa Malaysia. DG has provided PCN mobile services, international calling card, global roaming, VSAT services, WAP, and so on. DG is that the second administrator in Malaysia to offer VOLTE, initially available to iPhone, running iOS 10.1 or more. Telecom Malaysia, known as TM, was created in 1984. TM is a government-linked company with the government owning over 36% of the company's stock. Don Bumi Putra, Malaysian, owned only about 4% of access share. With over 28,000 workers and a market capitalization of more than 25 billion ringgit, TM is one of the biggest recorded firms on Busa, Malaysia. TM has providing a wide range of communication services in fixed telephony and broadband, Wi-Fi, cloud, data center, network protection, IoT, and smart services. For commercial and household use, TM offers internet connection and data services. Voice, messaging, and global roaming are also provided by TM. U-Mobile is Malaysia's most recent 3G service provider and was established in 1998 as MeTV Network Sendiran Berhad. U-Mobile is wholly owned subsidiary of U Television Sendiran Berhad. U-Mobile has about 700 employees and as of January 2021, it has more than 7 million subscribers. U-Mobile aims to improve consumer life by providing easy access to entertainment, communication, and information through advanced technology via one convenience and omnipresent platforms. U-Mobile offers prepaid and postpaid plans, remote web, broadband, fixed line, and mobile services. My name is Wong Kama and my matching number is 287612. Next, I'm going to talk about current legend trend and issue of the company Asheta Group Perhaps. The first current major trend in Asata is called Cellcom. Cellcom is the earliest operator to conduct 5G turret and pilot in Malaysia. It needing a 5G era and had excellent recovery momentum in the market despite an intensely competitive environment. The revenue S device increased by 4.6% thanks to the strong prepare performance. The second one is called XL Asata. XL Asata also one of the example to conduct 5G turret and pilot in Malaysia, also in Indonesia. It established a team highly skilled in new technology and great momentum, demonstrating strong growth with increased revenue as device 7.7% in 2021. The third one is called Robby. Robby successfully conducted 5G test run in Bangladesh and offered data package at reducing rep facilitating student continuing 
education and stronger data consumption, and the revenue as device increased by 8.3%. Furthermore, the next one is called Dialog. Dialog steady run result in double digit growth across all metrics, and the revenue as device increased by 18.6% and launched first 5G pilot network in Colombo, Candy, and Kali. The fifth one is called Nice Sales. This is Commercial Breton Award in April 2021 and the revenue close by 3.5%. The next one is called Smart. Smart revenue as device increased by 9.8% and it enhanced mobile broadband and fixed wireless access. Next, I'm going to talk about the issue of the company. The global industry has recognized the quickly unfolding COVID-19 crisis that affect the company. For example, it also had prolonged lockdown, high competition and slower expected subscriber growth. Asiata and material issues such as in market, operation and financials. There is also Endoco. Endoco in bad pie, post post order and overall is stored out in planning network expansions. My name is Nur Nabila Atiyafah Bintu Nwazani. Meet metric number 287509. Uh, even with the uh, SWOT analysis for Azeta Group Berhad. Strength analysis for Azeta Group Berhad is strategic location. Uh, this show that customer know about the company's brand exits. Strategy location is important because it can minimize uh, inventory and maximize profit. Azeta Group Berhad also have many skilled workforce in their company. Their employees has different background with different skills. They uh, create an uh, engaging and fun workplace for their uh, staff. Next, uh, strength analysis for Azeta Group Berhad is they diversify into many segments. Market segmentation is uh, a process of dividing a large market into the smaller market according to purchasing behavior. One of weakness analysis for Azeta Group Berhad is a low market share. Changes in market share will give a greatest impact on a company's performance in industry. Weakness analysis for Azeta Group Berhad is they had to compete in terms of internet service package so that Salcom also had to launch a new uh, latest expect SIM card uh, with lower prices to attract more people. Uh, one of opportunities analysis for Azeta Group Berhad is uh, population growth and urbanization are increasing demand. Broadband has expanded everywhere so that internet networking has become one of necessity for customers to communicate over long distance. Opportunity analysis for Azeta Group Berhad is market penetration internet is increasing. They use market segmentation strategy without changing their service. It will give the new customer to try out their service without hesitation. One of uh, three analysis for Azeta Group Berhad is aggressive advertisement. Maxis Communication is one of their competitors uh, that offer the same package internet plan. To attract people, uh, the company need to increase internet speed and extend the internet plan with high quality. Lastly, trade analysis for Azeta Group Berhad is frequent changes in technology. Technology advance has uh, accumulated wisely so that the company should upgrade their technology follow the current need. Customers like to watch video continuously without uh, the visual become burning so that uh, the company should find a way to catch plan uh, compared to another company telecommunication. So analysis is very important because so analysis is a main role in a marketing, management, financial and company's capability so that the company must uh, 
to analyze SWOT analysis to do long-term planning in the future. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ong Kafa with the matrix number of 2x7548. Now, I want to present about the future direction of Aseta Beha. Aseta Beha wants to advance in Asia to become next generation digital champion by the year 2024. Prior to establish this course of action, Aseta sets a new goal known as, known as Advancing to Zero. What is Advancing to Zero? Advancing to Zero is guided by a science based pathway in ICT sector to reduce GHG emissions in order to achieve Paris Agreement goal, which is limit the global warming as well as below of 2 degrees Celsius. After that, I would like to choose two subsidiaries from Aseta to talk about their future direction. Firstly, the first that I choose is Cellcom. The future direction of Cellcom is providing an advanced e-commercial entrepreneurship training to native people. Besides that, Cellcom also wants to provide a disaster alert message service via its EMS. EMS is as known as Enterprise Messaging System and 4G connectivity to have a real-time collection of data about the water level and water quality monitoring. The natural disaster risk will be reduced and better to manage thanks to the data management and alert system. Besides that, the second subsidiary that I choose is Smart, Smart Asiata. The future direction of Smart Asiata is cover more digital tools and concepts in workshops and supply the materials. After that, Smart Asiata also want to enhance a series of digital with video champion to investigate the dangers of children, exposure to online contents and online predators. This is wanted to, to because this is one that to enhance because to raise the public awareness among children. As the final, Smart Asata wants to look for more partners to collaborate on the launch of digital and digital educational platform on digital literacy and citizenship. Next, suggestion on appropriate strategies for Exata Group Berhad. This is three suggestions for Exata Group Berhad. First, strategy for sustainable growth. Exata Group Berhad should optimize the asset, accelerating digital and managing interface as positioning for new norms. As we know, there's a lot of new things that we need to face during this pandemic COVID-19. Almost everything has changed and everyone should change to, to fix the pandemic COVID-19. Next, Opus Transformation. Opus Transformation is to achieve company long-term strategic objective every Opco to zero in key focus area. Next, Azeta Group Berhad should find new growth zone or new growth area as it's great to get double-digit enterprise, home, and digital value added service. Second strategy. Second strategy is Exata Group Berhad using operational excellence as company DNA. Exata Group Berhad should do company capital or money management wisely. It is to be the lowest capital producer or data and deliver on all customer promise. Next, Exata Group Berhad should find new engagement model by transformation via the virtual centralization of the collective brain. Next, Stakeholder management. Stakeholder management is to have a greater goals on regularity and sustainable and sustainability matters and company role as nation building partners. Last strategy on structural change. For an example, industrial consolidation. Azeta Group Berha will explore mergers and equation where chances arise. It is to achieve a goals in performance and partnership. Next, optimize portfolio and value illumination. It is to driving organic growth and identifying strategic organic transaction. This strategy basically about achieving goals in partnership and performance. In conclusion, Asiata Kupaha is one of the most popular leading Malaysian telecommunication company. In this assignment, we will get to know there is a lot of product and service provided. Asiata Group such as digital capital, digital financial service, and infrastructure. The world will become more digital than Asiata as long-term investor with the growth of becoming a digital champion in 2024.